Hello and welcome to another demonstration. This is the second part of the October challenge of Inktober by Jake Parker, um, where you just create an ink piece and then post it online. It, I think the idea is to challenge yourself. So I'm going to be doing this chimpanzee in both permanent pen and a water soluble pen. This is a very small, fine pen and I'm just going to sketch around the chimp and I'm possibly not going to go round all areas but water this permanent pen means that I can go over it with the water soluble ink so I think it's sketchy there's some areas which are a little bit more solid like the eyes and the nostril but again I prefer to sketch around just because it gives more texture. Eyes are really pierce, piercing because they're quite light in this chimpanzee. I've got dark around the eye and very piercing round. I'm going to do this in the permanent pen because they're key features. Same with the nostrils, they're dark. So I can get them as key features. And again, mouth here. I think they have skin and wrinkles very similar to we do and if I curve this line it's curving the bottom lip now chimpanzees I think it's 98% DNA the same as a human I think chimpanzees are closer to the human than they are to a gorilla in their DNA and they have a community, they use tools, they work together in groups very similar to humans. They can live, I think to about 30 or 40, even longer in the in a captive environment. And their skin, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking of texture for fur. And you can see his skin on his face. Or oh, it might be a her, I think it's a him. Um, their skin gets darker with age. Just resting his chin on his hand. Okay. Again. I think you can. S this must be an older chimp because a lot of the fur has gone. But look at these muscles up here. Look at the fur. His face comes round. So, my key feature is these eyes. So I'm going to just make sure that they're the bits I bring out. Permanent pen will not wash, will not move when I put water on. Now even with a permanent pen you do still need to let it dry and cure and that's the key. So. If I put it on now, the chances are in some areas it may still move. But if I left it a few more moments, we're not talking hours, we're talking minutes, he should have cured. I'm using a cross hatch to build up some of the dark, especially in the eye.
because his eyes are recessed, so it's quite dark in here. And I want to also suggest the fur just putting some stronger lining because a lot of it is very similar. And I think I want to create some thicker lines. This is a very fine pen. So it takes a, a little bit more work to build up. Shake that a little bit. Inside the ear, it's going to be darker. Cross hatching is one of the quicker ways to build up some of these darker and lighter areas. Let's bring out some Still quite dark in here. And let's put some of these lines on. Because this skin has the same kind of, I don't say wrinkles, laughter lines or lines that you would see on a animal where the f there's no skin on their face, so they have lines. Dip in the nose there. It actually comes around here. So. Got a deeper line there. It's still darker around the eye. I think that's quite interesting marks on there. And I'm going to go in with a fountain pen. Now, I joke a lot that I don't like using computers or technology. I've worked my way around and that I still write with a fountain pen, which is absolutely true. I love to write with a fountain pen because it, it gives such a nice feeling to using it when you're writing. Now, this, inside this fountain pen is quink ink. Now, quink ink is a traditional ink for fountain pens. This is the black and I will show you what it does, which is the really exciting thing about this ink is that it's water soluble. You don't need a lot, surprisingly because it goes a long way. So I am just putting it in a few areas. Here where it needs to be dark, I'm literally putting it on a little bit. Because you'll see when I start to add water, how far this goes. And let's start with this because I can always keep building up so let's see where I put the ink from the fountain pen. Like I say, quink ink. And this is the black. It should, and it is very paper dependent, split into a kind of a blue and a gold. But I'm not sure it does fully on this paper. So you can see just there where it's picking up how little you needed just to be able to move this ink. 
splitting into a nice blue. I don't think I'm getting the gold yet. Maybe I need some more water. Again, see where I, I put it, it's picking it up. Just caught it on its mouth. So the nose is actually, I think I put it there, didn't I? The face here is probably the lightest area. I don't want to overwork. As we get into the body, I'm going to need some more because I think this is much darker. Let's put a lot more ink on here. Definitely much darker into this part of the body. So put ink on. And that's what I'm doing. I'm putting ink on. Dark around here. See, I am careful with it because I know how much it moves. It's always easy, you can put it more on, it's harder to take it off. So, see just from those few lines, how much that's moving. Let's see if I can really get the gold to come out. Just love the way that the ink works for you. You just catch the edge and it Pulls it in. Yeah, I don't think this paper is really allowing the... It is a watercolour paper. It's obviously just not allowing the ink to split into those gold. Or I get much more results straight from the bottle. Um, if I use it straight from that beautiful quink bottle, I definitely can get more um, splitting of the colour. Right. go back in Let's see what I've got in here I know I put some color in there right. a little bit definitely darker in here so let's push color like I said the face is probably the lightest area so I definitely need to push this back oh look you can see some of that gold coming through that's lovely and it's really nice putting the ink onto the wet as well the qualities you get from there Just see how it bleeds and And the reason I'm using watercolour paper is because I'm using the water. And this is designed to take the wet. Whereas a cartridge paper may cockle a little bit more than this does. Just picking up the colours I have on the brush. The 
This needs to be a little darker under here. move so I definitely need to darken off and the face here and put some more ink on here. Literally dotting it on because, it, like I say, I know how well it moves. Right, back in. And I might not even um, move the ink with water this time. I'm just seeing how dark I can get this by just applying the ink. Because the page is still slightly damp, so it's just sucking the ink from the pen. It's lovely to use a fountain pen just to get the marks. dark Here, here, let's darken that off a little bit. A bit more value on the head. And those eyes just soften them a little bit so they're not quite as white. I think I want to darken just here and then I'm going to leave it. well maybe a little bit of darkness under here just to show that that's in shadow move it up and around yeah much happier with that now so therefore this has to be dark okay And possibly a little bit more shadow under here. And I think I'm getting towards finishing because I know I'll overwork. Okay. 
like that marks. That's it. I think that's all I'm done. So you can actually see the quink ink is splitting a little bit into its golden hues. So doing this chimpanzee using the permanent pen and as you can see it doesn't move with water and then also using a soluble ink which is the traditional fountain pen ink, quink ink, in a fountain pen to create all the tones and values. So I hope you enjoyed that and join me again soon for another demonstration. Thank you.